Welcome back to Brazil Crypto Report. Today I'm joined by Gladstone Arantes, blockchain specialist at BNDES. We talk about the new Brazil blockchain network, which seeks to unlock new blockchain applications for government and public interest use cases in Brazil. Welcome back everyone to Brazil Crypto Report. I'm your host, Aaron Stanley, and today we're discussing the Hedgy Blockchain Brazil, also known as the Brazilian Blockchain Network, which is a blockchain specifically for government and public interest use cases in Brazil. To tell us about this, we're joined by Gladstone Arantes, who's a blockchain specialist at BNDES, which is Brazil's National Development Bank. Gladstone, thanks for coming on the show. Hello, Aaron. Thanks for having me. Could you just introduce yourself quickly and tell us a bit about your work at BNDES and then also maybe explain what BNDES is for folks who may not be familiar? Yeah, BNDES is a, a very different kind of bank. It's not a bank, it's not a commercial bank, something more similar to World Bank or International Development Bank, the IGB, for example, is a bank that has the mission to try to develop, develop the country in terms of economic and, and social. Uh, and I'm working in BNDES now for 26 years, I think. A lot of time. A lot of time. I'm from IT. I'm, I'm a nerd guy. I, I have all my career in, yeah, I, 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 in, in IT, information technology. I have a, a bachelor, a master, and a PhD in, 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 in computer uh, engineering, in fact. Uh, I, I had a PhD and a master degree in distributed algorithms. On the time, it was not as fancy as now. There was not, there were not blockchains at the time, so uh, anticipated the movement, let's say. And um, uh, in 2017, there were there was a, a contest inside Vendas, a contest of innovation, and I and other four friends, we proposed a project to using blockchain. It was not Airbnb at the time; it was Bundas Token. We can talk about it, and. Uh, through the learning of the process, we together with other government bodies understood that it could be a good thing to have a blockchain for uh, you know government and public interest. But we can talk later about it. Let's wait a little. So to get started, can you give us an overview of what Hedgy Blockchain Brazil is and what the, the core problems are that you're trying to solve? Uh, and when we say Hedgy Blockchain Brazil, we're talking about the Brazilian blockchain network. So RBB is the acronym for it. So if we use that in the future moving ahead, that's what that stands for. Yes, people people re hear a lot about blockchain. And most uh, when you say blockchain, people remember, you know, Bitcoin, Ethereum, etc. There are public blockchain. Public blockchains are uh, public in the sense that everyone has access to read what's going on there. You can audit the ledger, etc but they are permissionless as well. What does it mean to be permissionless? Uh, everyone can participate. Brazil Crypto Report is presented by Kaleido. Kaleido is the most trusted digital assets and blockchain company by enterprises. Their product suite is the ultimate business blockchain cloud and is rated number one for tokenization and number one for blockchain as a service. Built by veterans of IBM blockchain and consensus, the Kaleido platform combines turnkey functionality with enterprise-grade security and scalability to power your application. Learn more and try it for free at Kaleido.io. Okay, you can you know connect your node, you can send transactions, everyone can send transactions, and everyone can, can have a node, can validate blocks, etc. The, these are the public permissionless blockchains. There are the private permissioned blockchains. There are the blockchains that you have to have a permission to access to send transactions, to have a node, and even to read the blockchain. These are the ones that people heard a lot about, you know, um, CBDCs, most CBDCs are more like private permissioned blockchains. Uh, not all, but most, I think. And when it's uh, hear about blockchains among banks and uh, to control uh, supply chains, something like that. These are private and permissioned blockchain. Uh, Airbnb is a very different kind of blockchain. Uh, as been that's a different kind of bank. These are different different kinds of blockchain. It's a public permissioned blockchain. 
so the idea as you, uh, you know when you're talking about uh, using cases of government it's very difficult to use public blockchain there there is almost uh, uh, no uh, uh, governments in public blockchain there's a reason for that because it's in, in regulatory terms is something very very complicated uh, because you know it's not uh, uh, it's, it's not permitted permitted to do this especially in brazil or other countries it's not easy so uh a public permission in blockchain has this uh this uh, construction in which the nodes that are validating the blocks they are known okay you know them you know them and so the regulatory problems get much uh, uh smaller but everyone can access to read. You have access. Uh, you can now uh, run a node, connect to the network, and have access to everything that's happening there. You can audit the ledger with your own node if you need, if you want. Uh, and uh, uh, this is a kind of blockchain that is uh, being constructed by some bodies that are similar to Bendes, for somehow similar to Bendes. For example, the IGB the International Development Bank, they have, they lead a blockchain uh, called Lockchain. Okay, this is a public permission of blockchain. The European Union, they have a, a project called EBSI, European Blockchain Service Infrastructure. That is a blockchain for integrating the states that uh, are part of uh, European Union. Um, and we thought that uh, we we got inspired by this project to propose something similar to to Brazil. So it's a public permission blockchain. Everyone can audit what's going on there. That's the good part because we are governments, of course. And uh, at the same time, we have this uh, let's say regulatory comfort, uh, viability because we are permission of blockchain. It's super interesting what you're doing with the, the public permissioned uh, framework here, because it's not something that we've seen a whole lot in the blockchain world. Usually the dichotomy of blockchains has been like a public and permissionless and open versus private permissioned and closed. But what you're proposing is basically a hybrid where uh, people can, like the public can see what's what they can read the chain, they can audit the chain, they can see the data that's being processed and the transactions have been processed, but they can't necessarily like write to the chain. They can't add blocks, they can't add information. Um, and then you mentioned there's a couple of other examples of, uh, uh, of kind of, of, of other you know countries that have been using this or other governments that have been using this. And I wonder if you maybe just touch a little bit quickly on like, what are some of the learnings of those, like particularly like lack chain, the, which was the, the project developed by the Inter-American Development Bank, which uh, I've been kind of following loosely, but it seems to have kind of the same public permissioned model that you're talking about. Uh, maybe just talk a bit about like what are what have been some of like the successes of of these types of networks, and are they, or is it maybe like too early to really draw any firm conclusions on on how viable these things are? Yes, I'm not getting so close to the other projects. In fact, like Chain and Epsi, etc. I what I understand is that Epsi is much more uh, interest in guaranteeing a kind of integration among the states that are part of the European Union. So if you have a, a, a certificate uh, issued by some institutions in some country, it would be important to validate the certificate in another country. This is the kind of, um, of use cases that uh, EBSI is trying to 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 support and it makes a lot of sense it could make a lot of sense is, uh, also in brazil because brazil is a set of states the states are not as independent uh, as the states uh, uh in european union are independent of each other but of course there are things that have the same uh, 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 uh characteristics right uh blockchain is a more uh, business oriented uh, network they have uh, lots of uh, user cases. Some of them have to do with uh, tracking some production of something, but I don't know the details about exactly what they're trying to, to, to achieve. I, I just know they are more uh, business-oriented. There is a very recent 
news about a, 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 a initiative similar to these other ones coming from Paraguay. Yeah, Paraguay are trying to do something more, it seems to be more uh, government-led uh, uh, initiative, as there is a, another one in Argentina as well. But I'm, I don't know the details about the process. I will not try to, to guess exactly what they're trying to do. But uh, they are uh, uh, totally uh, government-led uh, initiatives, probably more similar to, to RBB. Okay, very interesting. Thank you for that. Um, and then maybe let's take uh, just a quick step back and uh, kind of more at the philosophical level here. And I, I've heard you talk about this before that there's 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 kind of like this crisis of a lack of trust in institutions in Brazil, like especially with the government. And uh, I guess without going into whether like that whether or not that lack of trust is like deserved or not, like I think we there's your what you're proposing is a, is a solution to some of that, right? Where it's <laughs> hey, like we're trying to provide more transparency. We're trying to uh, you know, some transparency is the best disinfectant to some of, you know, to, to corruption or, or whatever, you, whatever have you. And what you're proposing is kind of a, is, is a solution to these problems here. So I was hoping you could maybe kind of dive into like what your core thesis is around, like, why is a, why is, why is a network like this? Why is a project like this, uh, like really valuable to like, uh, you know, Brazilian society right now? Yeah, so, uh, in fact, I, I used to say that uh, the the implosion of, of trust is not a problem of Brazil anymore, it's only of Brazil, of Amer Latin America anymore. Uh, this is a problem of world, worldwide. Uh, democracies are, are facing these problems, and we have some research showing that. I, I, I always uh, like to, to, to uh, talk about the trust barometer. That's a research that's published every year by Adam. And in 2017, they detected the implosion of trust. That was uh, the headline of the executive summary, right? Uh, but in Brazil and in countries like Brazil, it's not a crisis. It's how we have ever been, right? <laughs> so we have more experience in that. Uh, <laughs> and the, 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 the kind of uh, distrust that people have it's not just about the decisions that are taken by government. It's the you know day-to-day uh, -day operational decisions of the bureaucrat, bureaucrats. You know, the 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 if you have a line for organ transplant, for for example, people may not trust that the, that line is being respected. If you have uh, money being sent to some project, people may not believe that the money is really going to that project. So uh, we have a more operational, more, you know, um, practical problem, in, in fact. So, um, and as you said, I, I think you, we talked about this before recording. Uh, it's not just, it's not in, sometimes it, it, it has a lot of sense, not trust. And sometimes it doesn't. How people will, uh, you know, know the difference. Um, uh, between the the situation, so and and more is not just only about transparency. If you go to the site of Ben that site, for example, all the the operations are there. You know, uh, it's it's very interesting because other banks, other development banks around the world, don't do this. Hmm. We are more transparent than all the other development banks in the world, really, and it's not enough. So we have a you know a, a real deep problem, and we we should try to do everything we can to 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 tackle this situation, and, and that, that's the idea. And when you talk about blockchain, it's not just about transparency; it's a little more. It's about trust, because when you have a smart contract running in a blockchain if the blockchain has you know is secure enough because it may not be if ha if you have a smart contract running in a blockchain it's not just that you have uh access to what is happening you can just trust that the transactions are going to respect what is stated in the smart contract you can trust it upfront trust is a compliance by design. And this is amazing. This is, it mm -hmm. can be really revolutionary in the long run, right? Because 
in the long run, if you could, it's not easy as this, but if you could put everything to run inside the blockchain, for example, you could just trust that the processor, you know, being executed as, as is. As you read the pro you read the process, you know the reality of respecting what is being uh, stated. So uh, thinking very broadly, uh, you can believe that you know the law is being respected. And, and right. nowadays you have to, to trust institutions, and the institutions are made by people, and people are more and more distrust in the people that run institutions. So we have to try to, you know, to present other solutions. This is more or less the philosophical part of what you're trying to do. Got it. Got it. No, that's super helpful. And that, that, I think you're, you're, you're definitely hovering over the target here, so to speak, uh, as far as addressing, uh, you know, I think that the, 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 the solution to the, 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 like the trust breakdown of the trust crisis, as we see in these Edelman, you know, trust barometer surveys, isn't, isn't to go around and like bash people on the head and be like, you need to trust the government more because they're good people. You know, like the solution is to try to provide more tools that will give the public more confidence in the institutions. It's not just to go around and like shame people and be like, you should trust the media more. You should trust the government more, right? Like, you, like no, you, like that trust needs to be earned, right? Uh, up to a certain it's a point. It's a mix so of problems. I like that. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So I, I love what you're doing here just as, as uh, in terms of like just creating a solution uh, to what is an obvious problem or like it's been a problem for a long time, I guess, but it's, it's a problem that's only continuing to grow. Um, so I'd love to maybe talk a bit about some of the applications and use cases that you foresee being built on this. I know like that the network launched in its kind of pilot MVP phase back in August. And as of now, it's just, it's just like a network, right? It's not, it's the infrastructure. There's not any actual applications running yet, but like maybe talk a bit about what do you envision uh, running on this? Like, what would this practically look like? Uh, you know, some of these applications and use cases? Uh, the first application that I like to, to say about uh, is obvious because the application we started with, it was Bendas Token in 2018. We implemented it as a pilot in, in the Ethereum. And the idea was to show everyone that the money was going exactly to, to the project that it was stated to, to be. So I, I think I, I cannot exaggerate how important this may be in the future for Brazil. Mm. People seeing the money flowing with their own eyes, our, our own eyes, where the money are going, you know. And so uh, this is the the most relevant, I think, kind of application that I would like to be uh, to see running in Airbnb, and we have some talks about this this kind of application we 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 did, we implemented bendas token in 2018 as i said before in ethereum what we learned that it, it was that using ethereum being government is not easy so rbb was more or less a natural consequence of that uh, previous experience but other uh, for example diplomas as i said before ebsi uh, has this time uh, this kind of a uh, use case that um, you can uh, 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 guarantee that the diploma is is real, and it's a big issue in Brazil. I didn't know that before blockchain. It's a mm -hmm. re really big issue in Brazil. Trusting in diplomas, diplomas from universities, you know, big issue. So this is a, a thing. And now we have in Brazil uh, digital diplomas. Digital diplomas are traditional application traditional databases that contain all the diplomas. Uh, everybody knows now that you, the, 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 the system manager can go there and, you know, uh, 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 edit the, the diploma uh, if, if he or she uh, uh, wants. Right? Interesting. Yeah. If you have something, you have something, a cryptographic proof in a blockchain, he or she is not going to be able to do this anymore. So we, this is one of the use cases that we are uh, expecting to run in in, in RBB. But uh, going generic, you know, notarization of information for government. If the information is money, if the information is a a line for organ transplant or a line for vacancies in a school, 
uh, if the information is about some uh, uh, procurement the gov government is, is, is doing, if the information is just uh, information about yourself, it's about diploma, so notarizing, giving trust about information that is, because government is much, a, is a lot about, you know, dealing with information. Having trust in information is revolutionary when it comes to government thing. No, that's super interesting. And I think the notarization as, uh, notarization use case is interesting one as well, because just because Brazil is so like heavily, like the notary system is just like, it, it permeates every aspect of life, right? It's kind of one of the, the strange things about coming here as a foreigner, like, why do I need to get like every little thing notarized? This is kind of crazy, right? So having, and there's lots of inefficiencies that come up with this, right? Where you get it notarized at one place, but that maybe it's not necessarily valid somewhere else or whatever, right? There's all these little, you know, kind of inefficiencies due to systems not communicating with each other. So I think systems like this, like what you're proposing, uh, definitely like, def it seems like there's some low hanging fruit, efficiency gains and, 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 and wins there that can be, can be had. Um, and then, and maybe just talk, I know there's as, let's talk about a bit about the stakeholders in this network. Uh, I know BNDS is obviously one of the main ones. You also have the TCU, which is the, I believe is like the federal audits court is how that would be translated to English. Um, and I'm not entirely sure what they do, so hopefully you can explain, but, um, I'm not still learning my Brazilian government, you know, agency acronyms here, but, and then you also have, uh, several other, uh, uh, stakeholders or participants in the network who are at other, like kind of more municipal, like state level, uh, levels of government as well. So maybe talk about, about who, who is like participating in this and, um, and like maybe what are the roles, some of these various, these, these various actors. Yes, first of all, I think that the TCU, the, the, the good translation is Court of Accounts. Mm, court okay. of Accounts, yes. Uh, someone said it to me some time ago. <laughs> I, I, I take for for granted. So uh, we have the uh, Benedict and TCU got together uh, in an agreement to create a network. And it makes sense because uh, TCU had done a work uh, studying applications of blockchain in government. And they uh, understood that it could be used for uh, uh, fighting corruption and increasing transparency. This was uh, their work that you know, uh, concluded this. And Ben Daesi was in another path uh, coming from Ben Daesi and talking with everyone like, as well, the same way as uh, TCU. And we got together and understood that, okay, it could exist a Brazilian network for, for this. So when we talk it together, it got a lot of sense. So an important thing, TCU is legislative power. Benedict yeah. is a executive power, is a federal level, executive and legislative. So we got this agreement that people can uh, participate in the agreement. So we have a Serpro and Dataprev that are two companies, federal level, executive as well, that are uh, service providers of IT, big service providers. Mm -hmm. We have two state level uh, participants. One is Prodenge, that's the company responsible for providing services in IT in the state of Minas Gerais. And uh, a secretary of transparency and control of Maranhão, is another state, in another region of Brazil. My, Minas is uh, southeast, and Maranhão is northeast, right? And we have a municipality that is Araguaína, that is from uh, Tocantins state, is very different. And we have uh, a university. That is Puki Rio from, from Rio from Rio de Janeiro, where, where I live. Uh, and CPKD and RNP. They are, these are two uh, research institutes. And RNP is more than research, research institute. They provide services for uh, public universities as well. Um, 
And I think I didn't forget any, any, anyone. <laughs> and what's very important, it's very difficult to remember, especially in English, especially in English. <laughs> uh, uh, for us, it's very important to have some uh, uh, lots of variations of institutions because, uh, as you know, blockchain uh, delivers security through cryptography and decentralization. What is decentralization in a permissioned blockchain, in a public permissioned blockchain? Is the variation of institutions. If you have private institutions, if you have federal, state, and municipal levels institutions, if you have different powers, it's like you constructing some kind of new institution over the the institutions that we already have in the in the in the republic and the, the in the nation i have a dream in fact i really would like to allow uh, regular people to validate blocks in this in this network and we are oh, interesting. starting to study this and it would be very interesting if it was possible together with the institutions have regular per person any person brazilian of course but any person helping to validate the blocks, it would be amazing. And we are th thinking about this. Well, it's interesting what you're saying, because it, it, it reminds me of just this idea of like checks and balances and like, uh, you know, balance of powers, right, in a, in a democratic system, right, where like the legislative branch is there to kind of balance against the executive, which is there to balance against the judicial and, the, and kind of and vice versa. And, and and what you're describing here is almost a way of doing that. And like these these age like they have these agencies or these different arms of government like have to agree on the state of the thing of whatever whatever the, the topic is, right? They have to like agree on the state of this of this. Uh, in addition to like a citizen who's helping to manufacture these blocks or to create these blocks as well, right? So it 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 seems like it it definitely there's it it definitely is going to be. Um, like it may not be like as efficient in some ways, right? I'm sure like some, you know, some of these agencies may not necessarily want, like, it's, you know, they may not have as like, they may not be as free to just do whatever they want, I guess. Like if you have to, you know, you have to get this, the, the consensus of these other, these other actors on the, that are operating on the network. But it does seem like having, having that kind of, it, it serves as another kind of balance of power and, and like a checks and balances on, on each of the various, uh, arms of government, which is really kind of the, the framework of how, you know, like a democratic sort of system is supposed to operate. Right. So it seems like what you're, what you're creating is almost like, it's like bringing this, this like checks and balances basically in an, in an on-chain environment, essentially. Is that, a, is that a helpful way of thinking about it? Absolutely. I, I like to say something like this. You have 26 states in Brazil. And obviously, they are not all of them are the same ideological alignment. They disagree a lot. You have people from, you know, the right, the left, etc. Uh, and it's amazing that different opinions are in a network because if they agree, everyone can agree what's going there. So as much dissent exist in the network if you produce a consensus so this consensus is trustworthy and then yeah it's <laughs> you know oh. it's the trust being creating yeah. from the distrust yeah exactly it's like you're you're forced to like you're you're forced to into this environment where you like you can't yeah it's a it's a Okay, I had, I had something. I had it made sense in my mind, but now I'm starting to say it doesn't make any sense. But, but yeah, be, uh, creating yeah, creating distrust out of this distrust is a helpful way of looking at it, right? And yeah, I wanted to ask because you, uh, you know, in in Bitcoin, for example, we have an incentive to be on the network. Okay? Yes, this is what people believe. That's one of the things that make the the networking uh, the network run, and you can trust it. But uh, there is another way of doing this. If you have different opinions in the same network and they agree, if you if you are you know if I have the <laughs> I make a exaggeration here. If you have a far left and a far right and they're agreeing a transaction in a block, this block is trustworthy. You can't trust this block. Right. We can find something to 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 agree around. You know, we we can find something to agree. Something basic that you can agree on 
to build other things over this. That's yes. what the philosophical I'm trying to do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and like and it's it kind of goes back to this this old adage of like, you know, even even with when there's political parties that are different sides of the spectrum, it's like usually people agree on like 90% of things, but then it's just the 10% that people are all fighting about, right? So it's like 90% of the stuff is like pretty obvious, right? So or it should be a slam dunk so to speak. So to the extent that we can get all that stuff uh, you know, represented on chain in the form of blocks that are that are sort of mutually agreed on. We all agree that this is the the state of the the thing that we're talking about. Uh, that seems like that seems like an easy win, right? Um, can as I, far can as I like, add something? Can oh, yeah, I add yeah, yeah. something? Please. Yes. It's very philosophical. That's the the the, the moment we are here. <laughs> uh, if you you can find something that is uh, we can agree on. Even if the something is very small and very basic, you know, it's a transaction is specified very, you know, uh, explicitly. We can agree on this. Everyone can agree on this. Uh, we can grow things more and more complex over it. So in Brazil, we are trying to get something that we can agree on, and we're going to solve the problem of operational processes, you know, day-to-day mm -hmm. -day process of government. But if you add, for example, artificial intelligence, we can go in, in things more complex. We can agree on more complex things. And this is a path that I, I can see that even uh, more developed countries could uh, build something to tackle the implosion of trust. The, the oh, question is, we're beginning because our problem is deeper. We are beginning somewhere because our problem is deeper. And I have the hope that we can offer uh, uh, a solution for the world. You know, because yeah. people in Europe, for example, may add that they are not going to solve the problems of the, the line of the organ transplant because they believe this. We don't. So we are trying to, to make something concrete to build things on. And I, I, I don't see the, the, the developed world doing this. And maybe we can help the world to, to you know, to fight this craziness that we're living on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, that's, I love where you're going with this. I love, the, I love this big picture. And because it is a lot more, it is, I mean, it, it, this is a lot, a lot more than just finding sort of incremental efficiency gains, right? It's, it's more than like, oh, like let's, instead of having all these different government agencies running their own databases that don't talk to each other, let's try to get them all to communicate better via blockchain network and agree on things. It's like, yeah, that's great. But like, there's, there's, there's a bigger picture play here of yeah. like, there's really like, like, a, you know, a way to like really kind of, you know, I don't know, this will like transform society or like digitize society or like really address some of these like really thornier issues that we've been talking about here today along the trust and, and just and just distrust of of institutions and things. So I, I like where you're going with this. And I, I think it's pretty inspiring. Um, I guess one thing that, that comes to mind here and, and maybe I'll, I'll just to kind of play like a, a devil's advocate sort of angle here, you know, it it doesn't seem to me that not ever it seems to me like not everyone would necessarily want this level of transparency that a network like this proposes um like if i'm you know a government institution that is like generally like i like i can kind of do what i want i can spend money however i want nobody like really is overseeing me too and too you know too closely um you know I, I, like, like i'm probably not gonna necessarily want this kind of additional visibility and transparency into what i'm doing right um, you know, I, I think, I mean, not, I mean, I'm, I'm speaking very generally here, but like, I'm just, just having lived for, on this planet for several decades now, I sort of know how these institutions operate, right? <laughs> just realistically. So, um, so I guess I would love for you to maybe address that, but also like, what are the, the major barriers to like onboarding new, uh, folks onto the network here from, from this point on, like, what are the, what are the, like the the questions you're getting or the, the, the resistance points you're getting from, from folks. Uh, oh, so many layers to, 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 to talk about this now. <laughs> so yeah. many layers. Let's, uh, let's go to one layer, very technical layer that I, I like to talk about. And then I try to address the other layers. Okay. The first one is really, there's a problem because you cannot be so transparent, transparent sometimes because privacy is also something important. So uh, th there is this gen genuine problem 
uh, for example, if you make a you know a transfer for a uh, a person, a regular person, being transparent for everyone in the the world that this person is receiving money from you know may not be reasonable because privacy is also a value, also a value. So. Uh, I think that zero knowledge proof can help us to address this as well. And I, I'm very excited about this, the, the, this possibility, because if you can have trust with privacy, this is even more revolutionary. So uh, that's, there is yeah. the thing. So transparency is not easy always. It's not something that we can do always. This is the first thing. That's not exactly what you asked, but I think I, I thought it would be too interesting to 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 talk about this. Uh, we have not, until now, uh, faced anyone saying, "Oh, I don't have an interest in this." Uh, that we could see that it was because people don't want transparency. What I see is two things: education and priority. Education is about no. It's not easy to. Have, no, not everyone understands what when you talk about, you know, transparency, uh, trustless trust, compliant by design, and how to use this. It's not easy. So education is a problem. It's a big barrier. I think it's the biggest barrier. In fact, hmm. uh, I, I would like to do is this. Uh, sometimes uh, the problems are so s small. They are simpler that it seems that they are sometimes it's not about you know uh the joker planning bad things i i know it happens a lot of course but sometimes it's much simpler than this so education for example is a big barrier and the other barrier is the uh priorities you know uh when you are honest public servant you have a bunch of things to do, a bunch of demands, people asking you a bunch of things. Are we going to prioritize a project like this? Who is asking for this? The public is not asking for this. Mm -hmm. We are doing this. We are convincing people, honest people, good people inside government to do this. You know, TCU is their uh, mission, of course. We, we are, because there are other priorities. So uh, it would be very important that uh, uh, the people, the public opinion demand this because people uh, it, it, people don't believe this, but in fact, inside government, the, the demand from outside make difference, make a lot of difference. So that's something that I, 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 I'm, I'm always worried about. We're trying yeah. to build something from inside out. It, it, it's not it's not going to work totally. O only if you can make some kind of miracle. Some uh, th There will be a moment, I don't know exactly when, when people from outside will have to demand this. Yes. Because, because people have other priorities. Yeah. Don't, yeah. don't think only the bad guys. Think of the good guys. <laughs> the good guys have a lot of things to do. <laughs> so, oh, they will do what is being demanded and, and people yeah. have to demand it yeah yeah well yeah the, the project is an early enough phase right now where most people either a are not going to know about it and even if they do know about it they're not going to know what it is uh so which is you know why we're having this conversation now to help uh, people know more about what this project is but yeah it, it's not mature enough to the point where people are gonna be like oh that sounds like a great idea i want that right so Yes, the, the 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 jokers are not are not acting uh, <laughs> right. yet, right? <laughs> so, um, well, let's. We've got a couple minutes left here, and I, I wanted to just maybe dive in, just do really quickly, like a quick overview of the tech stack that you have. I know you're using, I believe you're using Hyperledger Bazoo for this, right? Which is uh, the same same platform uh, architecture that the that the central bank is using for the Drex project. So obviously, given that overlap and there's EVM compatibility there, I wanted to get your thoughts on like how do you see this potentially, um, you know, like interoperating with or overlapping with what the central bank is doing, um, and then um, maybe why why did you make some of these architectural decisions 
uh, to go with with High Pleasure Bazoo. Uh, we uh, we started this blockchain thing in in Ethereum, so we are we are used to EVM architecture from the beginning, right? And when we started to talk about uh, building a public permission blockchain, you have the contact contact from uh, with many people, including Lockchain. And Lockchain chain was also in the beginning. I, I'm not totally sure, but uh, they are still Bazoo again as well. Um, and it, it seems to make sense because uh, we are trying to, we are talking about the public permission blockchain. So things like uh, uh, hi, 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 no, it's not Hyperledger anymore, but let's say Hyperledger because I'm not used it to L LFDT, LFDT fabric. <laughs> fabric is not for public blockchain is for private blockchain so uh the option for uh, something that is more close more similar to ethereum for public blockchain seemed for us from the beginning natural but was, we were inspired by blockchain as well we in the beginning we have a memorandum of understanding with blockchain and we work together to build the first version of rbb the first version of rbb worm was more or less a uh, blockchain version zero, version zero dot one or something like this. So we somehow um, inherited uh, th their implementation. So mm. it's, it was more or less natural. And the other projects around the world, they are or the, the zoo, or but some, most of them are the zoo, and the ones that are not the zoo are Ethereum in any way. So in terms of architecture, it seems to make a lot of sense. And in terms of institutional, institutionally, it, it had a sense as well. So, and they would ask it about interoperation, right? Um, with DRAX, the CBDC pro, uh, project in, in Central Bank of Brazil, we have this ex uh, expectation. We have talked to them recently a little about this. And um, uh, we talked about the possibilities of study together mechanisms for interoperate, uh, in, in, interoperating these networks that would be much easier than interoperate with other networks, of course. Uh, Central Bank have has some uh, initiatives of research in this, in this, um, in this direction. And we are studying how to work together to tackle this problem. And of course, if you could do this uh, with central bank, we could probably do this with, with blockchain. That is the same technology. And maybe probably Paraguay and probably uh, BFA, that's the Argentina one, I'm not sure it's Bezu. And not even Paraguay, I'm not sure it's Bezu. But we probably could interoperate with other networks. It would be amazing, you know, if you could operate with uh, ABC, Lockchain, and and Drax, and we thinking and talking about this. Yeah, that would really open up a lot of possibilities, wouldn't it? Um, mm -hmm. So that, that seems it seems like the logical, especially it seems like there is there does seem to be kind of this uh, network effect that Hyperledger Bazoo or or D D T F T Bazoo, whatever they're calling it now, uh, decentralized trust Linux Foundation decentralized trust. Uh, whatever they're calling it now, uh, but like, but yeah, I, I think that's super interesting that you guys have this kind of in your in your roadmap, right? Like, this isn't just like, oh, we're just building, you know, like just new private databases that we're just going to kind of use amongst ourselves. Like, this is the whole idea is to be interoperable, and that you get those network effects, you get, uh, you know, that 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 becomes an entirely new, um, you know, to your point of like of building new things on top of this infrastructure. I think it becomes a lot easier if you do have those that interoperability, those network effects. Um, so um almost out of time here but i want to just kind of give you the last words here on you know what, as far as like the roadmap goes for this like what should we be expecting in terms like you know i know you've been kind of working on this at least for what, like five six years since your bnds token project came out but it, it, i know you've been really focusing on like this for maybe this rbb itself for maybe like you know two three years now just kind of been getting it things spun up and whatnot um, but what should we be expecting on the roadmap, you know, over the next couple of years? And, um, and just like realistically, how long would it take for something like this to be like 
maybe we'll say fully implemented, but I don't really know what that means exactly, but like implemented it at like, <laughs> you know, where it's, it's like, it's like, you know, there's, there's some scale to it. There's some momentum behind it. No, we have a, 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 a roadmap more or less like this. Now we, uh, everyone that uses Airbnb have to be in the agreement. We don't, uh, and I say use in the sense of sending transactions, validating blocks, etc. That's the situation now. Why is, is like this? Because uh, uh, you know, in civil law, uh, I don't know exactly the terms in English, but I think the civil law in Brazil, you can do whatever you want, except if the law says no, you can do it. You shouldn't do it. In public law, is the opposite cannot do anything unless there's a law saying that you can do that thing. You know? So it's very bureaucratic, right? So we are trying to be very careful in the sense of being okay, uh, uh, respecting laws and, and etc. So there's an agreement and we can work together. That's what we're doing now. No one outside can use, send transactions, connect to this network to to uh, to run their user cases. You can audit the network, the regular system, but not send transactions or validate, etc. cetera. Uh, there's a very uh, important um, delivery with two parts. When people from outside network can participate, we have, we have to have an instrument, a legal instrument to make this possible. Hmm. And we are building, you start to build this, okay? Um, this is the first thing. The other thing is this. Now, there is no uh, agreement about how uh, available this network will be. Okay? It's not, there's no agreement. People are not saying that this is will work 99.99% or something. So we have to increase the security of the network. We have to increase the process to, to operate this network to make it real, uh, trustworthy in the in the sense of uh, the availability, the resilience of the network. So this is the things increasing security, increasing the availability, and making possible uh, entities from outside to 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 use the network uh, in terms of legal instruments. These are the th three things that uh, uh, are real relevant to say, okay, this is a full-fledged production now. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and we are trying to build this. Uh, right. It's not clear how much time is, is going to, to get, but uh, everything goes low in public, in public <laughs> institutions because it's very bureaucratic. It, yeah. Even if you have all, ah, I'm excited, I want to do this, but it's slow and more. Uh, no one uh, is the uh, is the the chief is the boss in this network. Things are decentralized. The seasons are decentralized. It's not me. You're not. You're I'm not, not the boss. I'm not, yes, I'm not the boss. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not the boss. I, I can uh, maybe someone can lead the network because we are humans, but not the boss. Uh, Benedict and TCU, uh, uh, when the decisions are taken, uh, we we are one vote. We have a right of veto. I think it's a, it, I don't know this name in English. We can say no, but we cannot impose anything to anyone. So things are slower, and that's okay, because it's better to go slower and sec more secure. Okay, more decentralize it, then deliver something, and there's no value in it. Yeah. So that's yeah, it. That makes it's, sense. Yes, it's uh something that have to spread. It's not going from uh, up down. You know. Yeah. So there's not there's not going to be any necessarily like blitz scaling going on here. This is more of a like we're going to kind of spread this organically. Uh, exactly. take our time with it. It's not, it's not something that can realistically just kind of go viral. Right. Um, yeah, so well, this is not for that. This is not yeah. TikTok. <laughs> right. 
So with well, that being said, like, I mean, what, what are the, in maybe the immediate term here, maybe like three, six months, uh, like what types of, you know, like, what are you looking to achieve? What types of, you know, are there like new partners you're looking to bring on? Like, lo- like folks to build applications, you're looking for more, more folks to come run nodes in the network or more like, what are your kind of immediate focus focuses on, on in terms of just bringing more people kind of into this ecosystem? Uh, we have three main uh, worries and uh, goals, um, applications and restricting the governance for accepting applications in the network and uh, trying to get people to run the applications in the network. It's not Ben Dice doing this, but everyone that participate. The other thing is getting more participants to validate blocks and uh, with more viability of, of uh, 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 institutions. So we uh, we are starting to to open a conversation with other states, even other powers. If it's important, it's a priority. And the third thing that is very important is taking care of uh, protection, uh, data protection law. Because blockchain is problematic when, when it comes to data protection law. If you have a right. data protection incident in the network, it's not going to be it is. So you have to take care of the things that run in this network. We can make very clear the responsibilities of the participants in the case of an incident. And we're talking with the agents, the Brazilian agents for protection, uh, data protection, and try to understand uh, and start together how blockchain can, can run um, without creating risks in terms of data protection. Yeah, well, I know this has been kind of the thorn in the side of the, the folks at the central bank with the Drex project, right, is trying to solve for this data protection issue. And uh, I know there, there's a variety of solutions that they've been testing out, and that's kind of the, the main the main purpose of the second phase of their pilot that they're doing right now. Uh, I mean, do you foresee a scenario in which you might like adopt, say they, they do find a solution that works, right, to kind of handle the transactions, the, the, the volume of transactions that they're looking to handle while preserving the, the the required privacy uh uh you know components i mean do you foresee a solution where like you would you would maybe maybe just like use this, the solution that they found uh for 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 the rbb or are these kind of like is this sort of like an apples to oranges situation where it wouldn't necessarily i think apply? their architecture and their goals are very different because okay. uh uh they, the the main issue of of their project is privacy. And ours is transparency. Right. And, and, yeah. and I think that we, we can and, and should work together, absolutely. But of course, we have, um, um, uh, it would be amazing to make it possible in RVB to have um, solutions for having uh, trust with privacy. Yes, but it's not the main issue, like in their cases. So the solutions Got probably it. won't be exactly the same, but uh, we have a lot of uh, sharing, the uh, opportunities to sharing uh, solutions and, and, and talks, and, and we are going to do that, I, I believe, but not exactly the same thing, I think. Okay. Got it. That makes sense. That makes sense. Um well, anyway, we're about out of time here. So I wanted to just throw it back to you if you have any final remarks or any, any concluding thoughts. And then how can folks find you and get in touch with you if they want to learn more? Oh, good. Uh, we have a GitHub. Okay, github.com slash rbbnet together slash rbb. And there is not just code. There's a lot of information uh, you there's a, a script for you running your node and connecting to the network. You can do uh, just running the script is very easy, but you can do your node the way you want as well because you know people are crazy. Um, and uh, there's a lot of information there. People can find me in Li- LinkedIn, uh, Gladstone Arantes. There's there are not. A lot of Gladstone Arantes in the world, <laughs> especially if they are Brazilian and working in BNDES, BNDES, <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, you can find me on LinkedIn, of course. And I would like to thank you very much because, as I say, uh, communicate is part of the work. And uh, <laughs> it's very important to communicate this kind of project. And I really uh, hope that in a not too long future, people can be talking about this and understanding the importance and demanding this, what you're doing now. Because we are more, like, more or less like a guerrilla, a guerrilla, you know? <laughs> No, that's amazing. Uh, well, this is super interesting work you're doing. Um, I mean, congratulations on the the like just the creativity and the and just really you know it seems like you've been at this for 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 well like seven eight years now or it seems. Uh, so really you know props to you on that, and um, looking forward to seeing how this progresses in the future. And and I, I do appreciate just the opportunity to like talk to you and learn about this because it's like I said something I've been following for a while. But I was never really sure what it was. I was like, is this like a real thing or is this just like a you know. I wasn't really sure. <laughs> so, uh, but anyway, I really appreciate this opportunity to talk to you about it and, uh, and just kind of hear direct from you the, the vision and how it's all being built out. And it's really interesting. So appreciate your time, Gladstone. And uh, thanks everyone for watching. And we'll be back next time with another episode.